Hey, hey, what can you do in 10? Hey, 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 what can you do in 10? I say, hey, look, what can you do in 10? Look, yeah, yeah. Now, what can you do in 10? I need three to find my pen. I need four to write it down, another three to tell a friend. I need 10 minutes to flesh it out. 10 hours to back my hunch. 10 days just to prototype, then get it to help me out. 10 minutes. To set a target, 10 minutes to sit down and draft up your budget, 10 months, you gon' be live on that market, might be hard work, but we gon' make it out regardless, this is for the men, women, all that boys and girls, it takes 10 seconds, cause in 10 years you gon' change the world, just a pen and a paper, a little motivation, you can be the next great living legend in your nation, bow. What can you do in 10, hey? What can you do in 10? What can you do in 10? Hi, this is Perry Marshall. And I just want to say a happy 10th anniversary to Intention All. Most businesses don't last 10 years. Most agencies don't know what they're doing, but you guys have done both. And I really want to salute you and congratulate you and wish another 10, 20 years of great success for you guys. And uh, once again, congratulations. Really excited for you guys. Take care. Hello there and welcome to today's uh, intentional uh, 10th birthday. I'm James Fitzgerald, the program director of SMK. Um, I've been asked to sort of do a few quick words to get us started today. Um, I'm an ex-client of Intentionals and have known the team for, for quite some time. Um, well, I first met Chris um, and Adam a number of years ago now. And in actual fact, Perry Marshall, who was just on the screen, was one of the people who actually inspired me to work with uh, these guys in the first place. You know, for those who might not be familiar uh, with uh, Perry, Perry is probably one of the world's leading authorities on Google Ads. And I remember uh, running SMK, which is a specialist learning and development business, if you're not familiar. Um, when we first launched in Australia, we went through many different sort of media agencies, some big, some small, trying to find a partner, which sort of thought about digital marketing the same way that we did. And I remember meeting uh, Adam at a cafe in Melbourne uh, about probably eight or years, eight years ago now, maybe something like that. And I remember sort of being quite impressed with Adam because uh, obviously he's, he's an impressive guy. And Adam mentioned in passing that he'd worked previously and was mentored by Perry Marshall, who we've just seen on the screen. And I remember at the time sitting there thinking, well, these guys are smart. Perry Marshall's like the Google ad guy. So again, it was literally at that point there that we chose to work with them. And like I said, we worked with Intentional for a number of years, probably uh, from probably maybe our third year through to about our eighth or ninth year. And, you know, the, the team, as most of you know already, they're very, very smart guys. And I think what I always appreciated about them was their ability and their willingness to sort of collaborate with us as clients at SMK and really take on quite big challenges. I mean, Adam will probably tell you a bit later on about how many horrible campaigns we made him do for us each year. But certainly, you know, we started off working with the guys across our Facebook ads and then, sorry, we started working on Google ads, excuse me, on search. And then over time, like a lot of businesses, you know, we started to do more with retargeting across the Google display network and then eventually across probably to Facebook ads as well. And, you know, certainly in that time, the guys were absolutely at the top of their game. And like I said, it's a real honor today. But like all businesses, I think, you know, there's probably a lot more to their story than even I know of. So, again, I think for a lot of us probably on here today, it's a good chance to obviously, you know, celebrate, obviously, a massive achievement for the guys, but then also to find out a little bit about how they've got here today. Um, and obviously what we'll be seeing through this program today is obviously lots of chatter about what they've done, but they've also got some really excellent speakers to join them today. I said, I'll pass you over in a moment to, uh, to the guys and obviously they can pick up from here and tell us a bit about how they've got here and where they're going. Thanks, James. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Intentional's 10th birthday celebration. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to celebrate with us. And uh, just on behalf of the team, I just want to say a huge thank you. Uh, we're so thrilled and honored to celebrate this occasion with so many clients partners and friends of the agency. Uh, we have a super intentional value packed birthday for you. And yes, there are some birthday giveaways to make it worth your while. So please be sure to stay tuned for the entire hour. Um, James and the team at SMK have been friends of our agency for many, many years now. Uh, for those of you who don't know, SMK runs uh, corporate training programs. 
uh, courses that are basically training up the marketing teams of some of Australia's leading brands, including the Procter & Gamble's, Disney's and Wes Farms of this world. So um, we've come a long way together and shared a number of clients along the journey um, and appreciate your support, James. Uh, and thanks for being our host with the most today. Well, if you don't already know, my name's Adam, and uh, 10 years ago, I registered a funny domain name at http slash intention.al, and I thought it was a clever domain hack for the name Intentional, but to this day, when we introduce ourselves, people still have trouble with it. So at least it makes for a memorable story, and uh, once we explain it, people tend to not forget us. So I think that's not a bad thing in the end. Um, but of course, not only did I register a funny domain name, but I also started an agency, and today, we get to celebrate 10 years of that agency. So the theme of today's celebration is what can you do in 10? And we're gonna hear from uh, some great stories from uh, some of our friends of the agency, and they're gonna share a little bit more and unpack a little bit more about you know what, what's possible to do in 10, in this case, 10 years, and uh, what can be done with enough time and passion and commitment. So later on, we're gonna be hearing from uh, Daniel Flynn of Thank You and Maria Montez, Again, both amazing friends of our agency and both uh, amazing stories that they're going to share. Um, but one of the stories that we practically never get to share is actually our own. And given that it's our 10th birthday, I thought that uh, it would be an appropriate time and maybe it might even be the only time that we'll ever share our origin story. So I thought we'd start there and then, uh, and then we can move on to our other speakers later on. So why don't we do that? So just to share, um, I want you to cast your mind back a little further, maybe a little bit further back than 10 years to 2009. So back in 2009, uh, some of you may remember that gateway computers were still a thing. Uh, back in 2009, the iPhone 3GS just got released. Back in 2009, Google AdWords, or at least AdWords search, looked like this. And also back in 2009, a little side project called Bitcoin launched to almost no fanfare. And back in 2009 is also when the first seed of an idea that would be planted um, that would eventually become intentional. And this seed of an idea, it didn't come from Silicon Valley, nor did it come from agency land, and it didn't even come from a hipster Melbourne cafe. It actually came from an unlikely place in Bangkok, Thailand, and more specifically, it came from the slums of Bangkok, Thailand in an area called Klong Toi. And so the seed of the idea was planted partly thanks to this woman here on the right. Um, her name is Bardeng. And so back in 2009, I was in Bangkok for two weeks to meet Bardeng and others like her who'd managed to lift themselves above the poverty line through a concept called microfinance. And so at the time I was fascinated with microfinance and I kind of still am. And I just wanted to see it working for myself on the ground. I basically wanted to see if it was legit because I was actually you know, um, donating some money into these micro businesses and I wanted to make sure that it was all legit. And, uh, and it turned out it was. Um, however, what does microfinance in the slums of Bangkok have to do with starting an agency? Uh, well, on the surface, not a lot except for the fact that the two weeks that I was in Bangkok, I just happened to be experimenting. And so I thought I would blog my entire holiday research trip um, that I made in the slums of Bangkok on this emerging platform called WordPress. Some of you may have heard of it. And I also just happened to have installed a plugin called Google Analytics. And I just happened to notice that my blog posts about Bardeng and about microfinance in Bangkok were getting views from people all over the world even though I had only shared my blog posts with close friends and family back home here in Australia. And so I realized I had ranked number one in Google for all these terms around microfinance uh, via what I then would, now, would then know to become organic SEO. So without even trying to, um, this nobody, me from Melbourne, was somehow able to get the attention of all of these people all around the world and to seemingly do a better job than newspapers or the World Visions or any of the other massive NGOs of this world. Um, and, it, and so really this trip, it became real for me um, that the internet had really just leveled the playing field. So as I reflected on this, I caught the first seed of an idea that would follow me for more than a decade. And that's that digital and the web really empowers 
anybody anywhere with a platform to be able to create change. And so on this two week trip, as I blogged each day and as I watched as more and more people read my daily blog posts, I realized that I had stumbled upon a whole new digital world that was emerging that I could see myself giving my all to. But the question was how, you know, I still had had a job and I still had to pay the bills and all of that, but how could I transition from what I was doing into this new digital world that was unfolding? And so when I came back to Australia, I started chasing this idea down and I started going to conferences and meetups in my spare time, trying to meet and talk to anyone in the industry who would listen. And don't forget, in 2009, there weren't a lot of digital marketing experts to go around, so the list was very short. I started following and learning from many, um, you know, I guess you would call them influencers today, but uh, back in the day, there weren't very many, but I at least started following and learning from this guy, Darren Problogger Rouse. Um, and I even managed to pick his brains over lunch one day, and, uh, and he gave me some advice. He basically said, um, basically, don't become a blog, don't quit your day job to become a blogger. Um, funnily enough, Darren Rouse is actually uh, my neighbor. He lives around the corner from me, so I still see him from time to time. And somehow I was also lucky enough, um, you know, in my chasing down people and, and ideas, I managed to make a connection and find myself a mentor in the form of Perry Marshall, who we heard from at the start of this call and who James also mentioned. Um, you know, as, a, as, as James also um, alluded to, Perry was pretty much the world, world's first Google Ad, AdWords influencer um, and literally wrote the book on it, uh, which you can still order on Amazon today. Um, basically, back in the day, there weren't that many people to, um, to learn from and even Google's own documentation was horrific. Um, so back in the day, if you didn't learn from Perry, you probably learned from somebody who learned from Perry. And so uh, before I actually go on any further, I'm just going to pause here and say a massive, massive thank you to Perry Marshall. Perry, um, I don't know if you're able to make it on the call today. I know that the time difference between here and Chicago is a bit, uh, a bit challenging, but uh, you know, if you are, and even if you're not, I, I just want to say a massive thank you to you because um, you know, we as an agency are really standing on your shoulders. So thanks for the kickstart that you gave us. And especially, especially in the early days, all of those um, open doors that you provided to us to help us get going, um, we greatly appreciate it. So we, we owe you a lot. So thanks a lot, Perry. So just continuing our origin story, um, armed with an idea, a moleskin, a laptop, and some newfound blogging skills from ProBlogger and AdWords skills from Perry Marshall, I took the leap of faith and against ProBlogger's advice, I quit my job. <laughs> and I ended up starting freelancing solo as basically a digital jack of all trades, basically whatever anyone would pay me for in digital, I would do. And so I did that for a few, uh, for a few months and I managed to get a few small clients from my own personal network here and there. Um, but my big breakthrough came from um, Andrew Smith of Albumworks, who I believe you're on the call today, Andrew. Um, and Albumworks was my first, I guess, official client outside of my personal network. And so a huge shout out to you, Andrew. So thank you for being the first, I guess, external part, party who, um, who trusted me to be able to be doing some digital marketing for you. Um, not only was um, Albumworks my first true client, but in time they would end up trusting me to work on what would be their biggest marketing project of the time. And it was a world first collaboration between um, Albumworks and Canon Australia and Canon Japan. And I'm pleased to say that the work that we did for them uh, on this project ended up tripling the sales projections um, that we had planned for. So um, I learned a lot on that project and I've learned a lot from you, Andrew. So. Um, again, a huge shout out to you. Our team has a whole lot to thank you for. So thank you very much. Um, I'm also proud to say that not only are Albumworks our first official client, but they are still a client of ours today, more than 10 years later. But even how much fun it was working with Albumworks and with Canon, I came to my first major crossroads as a full service freelancer. And that was that after many months, I realized that being a digital jack of all trades and trying to guarantee a quality of service across all of these different areas um, was basically impossible as a freelancer. You know, by even in, even in 2010, by this time, every area of digital was growing at an exponential rate and I just couldn't keep up. Basically every day at the office felt like this. So at this point, I'd proven to myself, and this is around 2010, I'd proven to myself that the leap of faith that I took to quit my job, to go full-time into digital, it could at least put food on the table and a roof over my head, but I couldn't see how to grow without burning out. 
Um, so it was a really tough position to be in, but I realized I had to take two steps back in order to take any steps forward. And so in the words of one of my heroes, Dieter Rams, I had to do less, but better. And so the only way forward um, out of all of these different possibilities was to say no to all of these other distractions and just do one thing well. And I realized that from the history, the short history I'd already had working with all these clients that um, the one thing that really lend on all of my strengths um, and also showed the greatest return for my clients turned out to be paid digital advertising. So with that, a new agency in 2011, Intentional, was born. And with the premise to be, uh, with the premise to not be full service and to only do one thing well, which was the paid digital advertising side of things. And so not only would the agency do one thing well, but what we would do was we would eventually build out a team of experts where each person on the team would also do one thing well. So in the beginning, that was pretty much just search. But then as the years went on, and as James mentioned earlier, you know, we started building out display capabilities, shopping, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, and the list is going to keep growing. Malcolm Gladwell is famous for saying that uh, 10,000 hours is the amount of time needed for mastery. So I am super, super proud to say that fast forward 10 years and the combined digital ad expertise amongst our team is over 100,000 hours. And so I'm just going to pause again because I don't often get to do this publicly. Um, and, you know, and a lot of us sort of keep to ourselves, but I'm just going to pause here and say a massive shout out to the team on the call right now. Um, you know, you guys are the best team we've ever had. And so because of you, we punch well above our weight. So we're celebrating you, Chantel and David and Ellie and Gal and Josh. We're celebrating you and this is as much your birthday as it is ours. So thank you so much, guys. And so not only is our philosophy as an agency to do one thing well, but remember all of those other areas that we were forced to say no to. Well, one of the benefits of us being able to do one thing well was it meant that we get to partner with other teams and other agencies who themselves do one thing well. So over the years, we've managed to build up a network of partner agencies who specialize in things like Google Analytics, email marketing, SEO, et cetera. And so basically that means that, you know, between intentional and between the right partner agencies, we can always handpick the best team for any client situation. And so at this point, um, I just want to pause again and I just want to say uh, a massive shout out to Damien Brown of Data Runs Deep, who I believe is on the call as well. Uh, Data Runs Deep, now Jellyfish, were one of those specialist partner agencies. So they specialized in Google Analytics. And uh, we met over eight years ago now and have shared many client, but also many a drink and many a webinar over the years. So uh, Damien, we just, uh, we owe you a huge, um, huge lot of thanks. Um, and we thank you so much for all the support you've given us over the years. Um, we couldn't be where we are without you. So thank you so much. And so that is pretty much um, a very, very short condensed version of our origin story. So I'm, not, I'm now going to pass you over to, uh, to my legendary business partner, Chris, to share some of the highlights of what's been accomplished over the past 10 years. So over to you, Chris. Thank you, Adam. And I don't have a slide for the next thing I want to talk about because it would have got taken out, I'm 100% sure. So I just want to take a moment to pause, as Adam just shared, <laughs> to congratulate Adam and to say thank you to Adam. Um, it's an incredible achievement uh, what you've been able to to grow and to deliver from that initial seed in the most random of places to to stay on the vision to keep driving that through through so many iterations of, of what we do through bringing a business partner on um, on a personal level i could not have done this without you so um massive massive thanks uh i think it's uh yeah, been a real testament to your character and your values for for what this team has been able to achieve I also want to say a massive thank you to all of our clients that have trusted us over the journey. I think we've added up that it's at a count of, of 68. Um, I want to say a massive thank you for, for trusting us. Uh, I don't take it lightly around the fact of you guys picking to go with a specialist and particularly when a lot of you may have never gone down that path before. Uh, I think back to conversations and uh, clients I know that you had to make decisions versus you using an OMD or a Dentsu or a WPP. At the time I thought, yeah, you're making the best decision ever. But thinking back to what your headspace must have been like, 
I, again, I just want to say thank you for taking that risk because as simple as for us to specialize, it's a big call from you. Um, we've also had the pleasure through that 68 brands of having clients stick around with us for um, many years. So our average client tenure is over three years. Uh, and that's a really uh, strong testament to you as clients that we work with, that you, you embody our long-term thinking and again, to us as a team. Um, through your brands, we've had the pleasure of advertising in over 13 countries. Uh, some of that from Australian brands going overseas and hopefully some of our international clients, if uh, the time zone worked, you're, you're getting to tune in as well. I'd love to say that I've mastered the Pacific time zone for all of those who, who have Facebook and Google ad accounts in the LA time zone. Uh, I still can't actually say that I have. Uh, and finally, I think what we've learned is we've got a lot more in common as uh, Australian customers with the rest of the world than we do different. And seeing our Australian clients particularly go overseas and do so well in those markets, being who they are, uh, is a really testament to, to sticking true to, to who your brand is. Uh, with the 68 brands, from what we can see, we've managed over $36 million in digital ad spend. Now, as we always tell you, make sure you have your keys to your own ad account. So it's probably more than that during that journey. Uh, but we've, we've obviously uh, been able to steward that um, through what we do. A key value for us is that stewardship and treating your money as clients as if it was our own. Uh, and so team, if over the 10 years I realized we've had over 5,000 weekly spend checks. So it's, uh, that's us getting together and making sure where are we spending that on the right channels and checking that uh, everyone's fine to, to be able to spend through and in the right places. Uh, and finally, through that 36 million, maybe the most important part of that is we've been able to deliver over $100 million in terms of direct revenue for, for our clients. Um, that's obviously, again, as we always say, first time purchase, you want to track that <laughs> lifetime value over the journey. But again, that's a really humbling number for us to look at. Uh, and we're really proud to have um, invested that money in the right ways to be able to deliver you guys uh, a return during that time. So again, thank you to all our current clients that are on here, our past clients. We love that we still can maintain relationships with you uh, and if any future clients are on here as well, uh, lovely to meet you. Um, I'm gonna now throw back to, to James. Excellent, thanks, Chris. Um, I just wanted to quickly say actually, um, as per my rabbit in the headlights at the starting, I've actually missed off a very important thing, which I want to just go back to do. Uh, and that is obviously acknowledgement of country. Um, even though we're virtual, I'd like to acknowledge my be begin by acknowledging and paying my respects to the traditional custodians of this land on which we are gathered today. I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Um, so just imagine I said that at the beginning. Now, next up, uh, someone who hopefully won't stuff up his beginning like I did is Daniel Flynn. Now, Daniel Flynn is a keynote speaker who probably needs no introduction to the digital space. Over 10 years ago, Daniel Flynn co-founded the Thank You brand with the ambitious idea of using sales of bottled water to help end world poverty. Since then, Thank You has become one of Australia's leading brands of how to harness the power of online marketing and advertising. Please welcome Daniel Flynn with his keynote, What Can You Do in 10? Awesome. Thank you. Well, James, I don't know if I'm going to stuff up the beginning. I don't think... I don't think yours was that bad. Um, I honestly don't. But massive congratulations to the whole Intentional team, uh, to Adam, to Chris. Um, yeah, this is a huge milestone. Um, worth celebrating. Love the theme. Love the song at the beginning as well. I don't know if anyone was listening along to the lyrics, but you guys have masterfully threaded this theme through uh, today. And, you know, I want to take a couple of minutes to unpack this. Um, what can you do in 10? Um, you know, and, and it actually was you know, cool for me reflecting on that. Um, and I've got a picture I want to, uh, I want to share. So um, th this picture, we, we were talking about it as a team, uh, actually quite recently. Um, and I think this kind of, kind of sums up what you can uh, at least set out to do in 10. So here we go. This is this is basically from A to B. And, and, you know, I think every idea in the seed of an idea starts out like that. Um, if you're wondering who's in the foreground of that photo, uh, I have gone to a lot of effort today. So that is Adam and Chris, a bit of Photoshop work there. Uh, but this is also, it's like, it's you, it's me, it's us, right? And, and I think, um, you know, when I look back to our seat of the idea in 2008, our A to B was imagine a world, imagine a world where as consumers, the products we chose 
righted a wrong, an injustice so dark that we don't think it should exist, which was extreme poverty. And we, we saw these two extremes of, uh, well, I mean, the, the latest statistics say we spend $63 trillion annually on stuff. So as consumers, that is our, our spending. And at the same time, 736 million people uh, were living in extreme poverty. Uh, that was before the pandemic. Now it's, it's gone up dramatically. And uh, we looked at that and thought, man, imagine getting to be a world where, you know, product looked different, the products we purchase. And, and I think the interesting thing about this point at the start of any journey is it looks so possible, looks relatively straightforward. I mean, we had dreams like, uh, ah, like this thing will be global in like a year, maybe, right? Like a year. Um, and, 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 and it seems kind of reasonable. Um, it, it really does. Um, and then reality kicks in. I think this is a great picture of really what it looks like um, going through like 10 years, um, going from A to B. This has certainly been our journey over and over again. Um, and, and maybe it's been yours. Um, I know that uh, at the beginning of a journey, it's beautiful when it looks like this. Um, and this, this kind of helps us all get in. Uh, Adam, I mean, hearing you talk about you had this plan to do everything and then you realize, oh man, I'm gonna specialize in one. That, yeah, there was some ups and downs that led to that decision. But here's what I think is really interesting um, because in, in 10 years, I know our experience has been, we've discovered well, how hard the journey is. And, and that's both beautiful and it's super challenging too. Um, I'll give an example, like our first three years at Thank You, uh, it, I mean, if I could sum three years up, maybe in like 60 to 90 seconds, it was rough. I mean, our, our launch, if you know the story, uh, began with a product recall because there was a labeling issue. Uh, we then relaunched 12 months later, our factory didn't supply product. Uh, over a five week period, we lost 300, about 350 customers. We relaunched only to have a new distribution company we relaunched with go into liquidation. And then two retailers who were looking at our product, both said no, both came out with their own uh, bottle of water at the time that went to funding water projects. And it was like exactly what we presented to them and it kind of disappeared in, in front of us and they played it out without us. And then one of the big supermarkets said, you're in, we got product ready. And then a new person took over and basically said, you're not in. <laughs> the decision uh, doesn't stand. It was with an old category manager. He had a big vision that included the big companies and you know their own brand. Um, and, so, and so that's like our three years kind of startup journey uh, in, in, in you know, a, a short period of time. But it kind of looks like this picture. But I think what's interesting too is that you do have some highs. And we've definitely had some highs at Thank You. Um, and, and, you know, the, um, the moments that you just go, how, how did we get here? Uh, Intentional helped us on this campaign, chapter one, which was a huge success. If you didn't follow it, it was a really simple promise um, and an idea, which was, we said, hey, thank you, stuck. I mean, we're in supermarkets. We had at the time 50 products. So if you're not familiar with the products, Probably our leading product right now is our thank you hand wash. It's still the number one hand wash in Coles and Woolworths. It was an epic journey how we got into Coles and Woolworths. But I want to focus on chapter one and this launch because we're putting a bold idea out there to the world. We said that, hey, um, we have a challenge in growing this vision. And the challenge is we don't have shareholders. We don't have investors. Um, and, you know, and so we need to, um, we need to find a way to scale this and we, wondered what if you what if we the community of thank you what if we grew this together and the book was i suppose in part a crowdfunding campaign the book was sold in these uh news link and relay stores and the airports at a pay what you want price it was sold online at a pay what you want price and we set this really ambitious target to raise 1.2 million dollars uh and you know i mean in in in, in a sense for, for for if you want kind of a, a read on is that big or not a best-selling book in Australia sells 5,000 copies. An author will make between a dollar a book to $10 if they're very lucky. So at best, maybe $50,000. We set this target for 1.2 million. And, you know, I won't give all, all the credit to the digital ads that were part of it, but like all of us came together. We pushed this idea out into the world. It was scary as anything. And we saw people 
um, kind of pay five cents for the book. But then we saw people pay like seven grand, then $10,000, $50,000. That was a moment of like, how did we get here? It was a high of highs. This book opened up doors all around the world. We raised our, our target of one point, or actually we hit 1.44 million in the first 28 days. And it's gone on to raise over $2.6 million. But the book opened doors. And there was another moment where I was literally like, how did we get here? Uh, we'd gone in 2008, sitting around our homes and garages, dreaming of one day this idea, maybe starting to take a stand on the global stage. And I was at a conference. I was invited not to speak, just to attend. And I, I, I kind of went for it. It was the Obama Foundation Summit thing. And I thought, oh, that, that sounds really interesting and made my way over to Chicago. And then there was, um, as I'm in registration, kind of queuing up. To, to register these two uh, girls who are part of the organizing team came over and they said, are you Daniel Flynn? And I was like, yeah. They said, you didn't get back to our email last night. I was like, oh, look, I, had, I don't even know what day it is, jet lag. And I said, that's okay. But tomorrow, um, President Obama has selected three young people, um, in, including yourself, to be interviewed on a live stream. Are, are you up for it? And this was a one of those moments, like, how did we get here? It was like a high of highs. It was crazy. It was like, you know, the, the, if you've heard me talk about this before, I, I've referenced the secret service coming in and locking down the room. Like it was the most formal, like movie moment thing I've ever been part of that one of the secret service counted down a hundred feet, 80 feet, like our, our hearts, like the three of us, we were an, an, uh, an emotional mess probably on the inside, um, but trying to play a call on the outside. And when, when President Obama came up, he was clearly briefed well. He, he shook everyone's hands. He, he, he knew our names, um, which, was, which was nice. And he asked how we're doing. I said, I, said, I hope, you're not, hope you're not nervous for the interview. He said, he's not. And I, I thought, well, why did you say that? Um, but this was his first post-presidency appearance after the election and, and in the interview, he asked the question, well, when's thank you coming to the work? I'm like, oh, President Obama, great question. We're, we're launching in New Zealand. After that one day, we wanna to get to the world. And that was a, how did we get here moment? But I mean, there's other, how did we get here moments? Like about three hours after that exact interview where we gave a hand wash and a pack to him. He, he said, thank you. He said, oh, Michelle and the girls, we wash our hands. This is great. I was like, Great. And, and then three hours later, I'm on the phone to one of our team and we had an issue with the product. And we found ourselves the next morning calling one of our major retail partners and making a decision to withdraw it off the shelf voluntarily. It wasn't a health and safety risk, but we kind, of, we kind of messed up our own process of product development and we felt the product was subpar. It wasn't meeting the vision we had for making remarkable product. And so we made a tough call to pull it off the shelf. It's a new... Anyone who knows a, a voluntary recall um, or withdrawal, they're very expensive, very, very, very expensive, very hard. And it just, it sucks on every level. I mean, that was like a high of highs and a low of lows in the space of literally hours. And you ask yourself, how do we get here? Um, we had a moment last year. I mean, 2020, I'm sure everyone on this call had a moment. Um, but ours was, um, it was super tough. Uh, we, we came into the year um, probably at our weakest financial point in Thank You's history. Um, and it, it was really weak. Uh, you know, it's it sort of the, it was off the back of once we launched uh, into New Zealand with the money we made from chapter one. And once we launched into the baby category, we thought, hey, Thank You's got great momentum. This is going to be easy, A to B turned out A to B would be the fight of our lives and it would be like a thousand ton of bricks coming down on us as we realized now when Thank You enters a category, lots of people know it may have potential. And we just saw in the nappy category, price wars and promotions like the category hadn't seen in, in years. New Zealand, you know, some of the ways the market responded, you would have thought we were launching in America. Um, I bumped into a CEO of a... Um, uh, big, big, big kind of, I suppose, competitor. But, you know, I, I just sort of made a passing comment. I was like, oh, it's not getting, uh, it's not getting, not getting easier launching things. And he said, yeah, but, you know, early days, no one saw thank you as a threat. And so 
we came kind of out licking our wounds from the New Zealand launch, uh, from the the baby launch, and and it was a it was a really kind of rough um, rough journey. I, I I think though when we sat there at the start of 2020, uh, we had to make some really tough decisions around just finances, and then the pandemic hit, and that that was interesting because, well, hand sanitizer sales went up, hand wash sales went up. The supply chain at the same time fell apart. Um, now, just so this talk doesn't fall apart, I, Adam, Chris, I'm so sorry. I was going to hit go on like a timer. So I have like no idea on time. So just feel free to like, just for full transparency to everyone on this, like you have a minute left or whatever you want to do, but um, kick me off whenever you need to. But um, last year we had this, this moment where in March we're at 40% production of um, of normal sales levels. So off a weak financial point, I mean, this is, this is bad. Uh, then come uh, April, we're at 40s and 50% of normal production. And so we saw financially the end of thank you is in the cliff and that getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And we're thinking, man, this dream, this thing we're building like A to B, like this thing is, this thing has literally about to fall off a cliff and it, and it, it hurt. I mean, for Justin, my co-founder and I, and we're married, if you know our story, but like these were hard days, man, hard nights. Um, they were for all of our team. But what I love about humans is humans who have um, shared vision that's bigger than themselves will always find a way. They'll always find a way to get to get to be. Um, shout out to one of our team, Kirk. He, if He's not on this call, but if, if he was, he would somehow write in the chat, it wasn't me, it was everyone. And he's right, but he also truly led it. Um, we were able to build our supply chain back up, not locally, but internationally. We found businesses around the world who, um, uh, you know, who had their own issues where they were supplying hotels and airlines and then they weren't getting sales. And so we were able to find capacity there to meet Australian retail demand. And in the space of kind of two months of, going down, we end up recovering. We end up supplying um, all major retailers, the Australian government, health facilities all around the country. And if you know the story from last year, we ended up making not just our most profit uh, in a year, but we made more profit in the space of those few months than our 12 year history. And so thank you went from $7 million raised for our impact partners around the world to uh, over $17 million, a further 10 million last year. So the journey is hard, it is rough, it goes up, it goes down. Um, I'm just gonna screen share for a moment here. Um, if you've been following last year, we also launched this, No Small Plan. It's a bold invitation to the world because they think what, um, you know, Chris and Adam were talking about there, the idea of like, you can be a specialist. And I think at, at times, thank you, we tried to generalize on everything, but like, who do you partner with? And we threw out this invitation to the world. We said, hey, we wanna take thank you to the world quickly. Um, and we want to uh, invite some of the biggest companies on the planet to take a look at it. And we proposed in a video, we've got a couple of million views. Um, we proposed a partnership model similar to how Yeezy, the Yeezy shoe is licensed to Adidas or um, Starbucks have got a coffee, but they have licensed the manufacturing distribution of that coffee pod to Nestle globally. And so we looked at a partnership where a company can't own Thank You, no one ever can, but they could help make and distribute. And so we sent this invitation to, uh, this is Unilever's head office in, uh, in London. Um, we put it in a 26 foot glass truck. We sent one to uh, p and in Cincinnati. We also invited nine other global companies. And what was really interesting in this is we asked consumers to kind of add their weight. And we had people in over 38 countries in fact, media in over 38 countries, I think we had 840 media features, something like 2.6 billion impressions. And that's a random stat. But the point is it just, it, it, the word got out and it has entered an absolute roller coaster. In fact, these photos were taken from a team meeting last week where we kind of updated everyone on, hey, remember no small plan? Yeah, find a partner. Yeah, this is the journey. We haven't announced publicly who's in, but it has been one heck of a roller coaster journey. You talk about good content for a future book, boom, we got it. It has been interesting seeing not just a response from two companies, 
um, and not just 11 of the biggest in the world, but also companies all around the world putting their hand up saying, hey, I could do Europe, I could do America, I can't do the world. But And so we're sat back not to make a quick decision, but the right decision. And that probably leads me to my final point um, as I have about a minute left. And that final point is, well, what can you do in 10 years? Um, yeah, I mean, you can have an idea, you can chase it, you can have some highs, you can have some lows, some moments of how did we get here? But I think you can also, um, I think you can also discover more about who you are and then who you wanna be. Um, I think this process for all of us is a deeply personal and profound journey. We live in a culture that says, if you haven't made it yet, you probably won't. But I listened to a podcast the other day and it really moved for me. It was a leadership podcast. And he was saying that um, they looked at data over leaders in history and they said, yeah, your best leadership decade is your 60s. I was like, what? Your second best is your 70s and your third best is your 50s. Now, some of you on this call, that's kind of encouraging because you're like, oh, I'm not even... I'm not even at the third best yet. It's interesting because I think we live in a culture that is just so here and now and short. But if we take a 10-year-old kid, a 10-year-old, when we were 10, yeah, we'd learned a bit, but we had a long way to go. We had a huge life ahead of us. And that's why I believe for thank you. That's what I believe for intentional. That's what I believe for all of us. If we kind of set our sights on a long game, I know for me as a leader, it has been incredibly challenging, but also confronting to realize the change you want to see in the world really starts deep on the inside. And I have gone on a long journey on, on, on some of that as walking through burnout, walking through like, wow, I absolutely do care way too much what people think. And that has some really bad side effects. Uh, I sat down with a, a, a counselor, a psychologist. I, I think I, th I think he, well, I thought I was only going to one session and I think he thought it too. Because at the end he said, Daniel, you don't have a fear of failure. I told him I did. He's like, I think you have a fear of rejection. What if people reject you? I start crying. We spend like two years going deep. One of the best things I ever did. Why? Because now as we step up to the plate with ideas and, and as we venture beyond our first 10 years into our second decade, we do it from a place of strength, not a place of trying to please. Uh, I've got a minute over. So let me just finish on this. In closing, in 10 years, one of the things you can do um, is you can pick up some great stories some great friends and some great business partners. Um, so intentional, thank you. Thank you for the journey. We've loved working with you. I appreciate all your support. Uh, I'm sorry that our budget with you guys probably looks like that line up and down, up and down, down, up. Um, but thank you for 10 years and happy birthday. Excellent. Wow, what a brilliant talk, Daniel. That was incredible. That was a really, really good talk. I'd actually, when I'd said to the guys I would sort of get involved with this, I was like, oh, I'll just zone out when it's not my bits because I'm busy. Uh, but that was a roaring tale. What an incredible story. And, you know, although your your billings with intentional might have been up and down, Dan, at least you probably paid them on time. One of the main reasons I liked the guys was really just because they just used to leave me alone for ages and ages and ages. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely a, a great team to work with. All right. So uh, I want to hand you back to Adam now. And he's got some ideas in place uh, to share with you and some 10th birthday offers. So uh, like I said, Adam, you take over from here, mate. And uh, yeah, keen to hear what you've got to say. Nice one. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, both James and Dan. Um, yeah, I know, Dan, we, uh, we've had a few of those chats behind the scenes and um, I wasn't sure how much of that you were going to share, but thank you so much for your, uh, your honesty and transparency. I know that um, you know, when, when we're having those chats behind the scenes, it really you know, it really rallies us around and we want to help. And so, you know, I think there's something about your ability to just be so vulnerable and so open that uh, that really makes thank you part of the brand that it is. And yeah, we're cheering you on too. So uh, we we remembered that chapter one campaign and, and the no small plan. And uh, we know there's a lot more to come. So yeah, cheering you on, Dan. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to uh, maybe, um, maybe the fun part of this, uh, this webinar. So um so we get to talk, I get to talk about some of our birthday giveaways, our birthday birthday merch. And so uh, just fittingly, uh, da uh, Dan just shared about um, the, the chapter one book that he wrote. And um, I do remember that campaign. I do remember the, uh, the first time I heard it, all the risks that came with it and uh, just the audacious goal to get there. And um, I'm so stoked that we did in the end. But uh, we're very pleased to say that we've got 50 copies. Uh, we've purchased 50 copies of 
uh, chapter one to give away. The book contains a lot more details of the stories that Dan shared today. So we've got 50 copies of that to give away. I'm just going to share the details of how to get a copy in a second, because the second thing that we've got is uh, the perfect companion to chapter one is a genuine moleskin journal. So these are the little Kakia uh, A6 journals. And um, we've designed them specifically for this 10th birthday. Um, and they still have the, uh, they have the what can you do in 10 uh, theme on it. Um, and what we'd love to do is if you'd love to get your hands on a copy of this, um, we'll send you out both the chapter one book and the moleskin. Send us an email at hello at intention.al and uh, we're going to keep it open. We're going to keep these open for 10 days. So you've got 10 days sentence. And we want to know what could you do in 10? What do you, what's, what's something that you could see that something worth, um, that's something worth giving yourself to. And it could be a business dream. It could be a personal dream. It doesn't matter. What we'd love to know is what could you see in 10? And uh, we'd love to send this out to you. Um, these will go, these 50 will go out first come first serve. So uh, send us an email, hello at intention.al and let us know what you can do in 10. And then over and above that, we've got a very, very special one for our top 10 favorite answers. We've got a extra special moleskin. So this is actually the, um, the black pocket A6, uh, A6 moleskin, I believe it is, black pocket moleskin. And um, this was the moleskin that I actually started the agency on all those years ago. And so we've got these specifically debossed with the what can you do in 10 theme. Um, and again, for our, for our top 10 favorite answers, we're going to throw this in as well. So please email us at hello at intentional and let us know what you can do in 10. So if you want any more details of this, jump onto our landing page. It's live now. It's our 10th birthday landing page at intentional slash 10. And you can see all the details there. Uh, I'm just going to throw over to Chris, who's going to share about our next giveaway right now. Thanks, Adam. And yeah, those mole skins do look uh, very good. I would like the... <laughs> One of each, please. Um, I'm going to share a, an extension of an offer that was something that Adam had started way back when. And actually, it's how we came to uh, No Thank You. Uh, and it was that Adam had offered, uh, I think at that time, 10% of his, his working time to um, not-for-profits and social enterprises. And through a random connection, which I actually think was from my little brother, um, <laughs> they came into contact with each other and it actually started uh, from, from just us helping out. Actually, at the start, it was with such a broad brand name of thank you. And then you go and Google search, thank you. Uh, it's quite difficult and you've done an incredible job to organically get to, <laughs> get to number one for, for thank you as a keyword. But at that time, having some help uh, from, from a Google ad point of view. So... As it's our 10th birthday, we wanted to put that uh, offer back on the table to um, offer up um, 10 hours of our team's time. Um, and so if you are a not-for-profit or you know a not-for-profit or you'd like to launch a not-for-profit uh, or a social enterprise included in that too, uh, we'd love you to um, visit again the, the landing page uh, intention.al slash 10. Uh, there's some information there on how you can get in touch with us. Um, let us know your project. Um, that might be help with an ad account. Uh, it might be a, getting a grants account set up, uh, although they're a pain in the neck, so <laughs> maybe not for that. Uh, but any of those, uh, you might just want to brainstorm a campaign or uh, you know have some help around what you're doing in, in the digital ad space. Uh, we can either directly work on it or connect you to it to one of our partners as well. So yeah, jump on if you're not for profit, uh, and or please share if you uh, you have someone that comes to mind as as you think of that to uh, take up the offer to to use ten hours of our uh, intentional team. All right, back over to James. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to introduce our final speaker of the day, um, which is Maria Montez. Um, a long-time friend of the intentional agency, Melbourne typographer Maria Montez shares her creative journey over the last 10 years. In keeping with today's theme of what can you do in 10, her talk is about how good shit takes time. Make sure you stay till the end though, because Maria has some freebies to give away also. Hola, my name is Maria Montez and my presentation today is called Good Shit Takes Time, which is something rare in the times we are living. During the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about three personal projects I have been working on for a very long time. As a disclaimer, I must say that there will be a lot of explicit language on my slides, and I will explain why during the presentation. So let's do that. 
More than a decade ago, I moved to Melbourne. I'm in love with letter forms. So it's not a surprise. One of the first things I did in the city was actually signing up for a typographic tour where I met Adam and his sister. I was new in town, didn't have any friends or family, but I was determined to find a job as a typographer. But instead, I found a job as a textile designer, which led me to illustrate more than 432 designs in two years. At the beginning of 2014, I started my independent career designing for the fashion and the luxury market, teaching calligraphy as well as textile design and creating my own, my own artworks, combining my passion for illustration and letter forms. At the beginning of 2015, I was approached by a cocktail venue in Melbourne who offered me to host my first solo exhibition. After the opening of my solo show, I fell stuck and didn't know how to keep pushing my career. So I emailed Adam and asked him for advice. I remember him telling me, don't show me your work and don't show me your website, but instead tell me why do you do what you do? At the end of our two hours together, Adam strongly suggested to start writing about my work. My very first email newsletter was exclusively focused on announcing my solo show, but thanks to Adam's advice, I decided to keep writing and sending email newsletters, sharing my courses and experiences that were inspiring me at each time. Now, three years ago, I had a melanoma removed from my face and I shared the experience and how I felt before and after the surgery. The amount of responses I received from people sharing their experiences with cancer were incredibly touching. I have been now writing for over seven years and my writing has taught me a lot of things. By my accent, you can tell that English is not my first language, but writing has made me accountable, has helped me to reflect on my journey and all the things that I have been accomplishing. My newsletters have also helped me to be vulnerable and they have made me a lot more articulate. So thank you very much, Adam, for that coffee many, many years ago. Now, at the beginning of 2016, I started a personal project called The Sheet Series. This project kick started by my fascination with language and all the colloquial ways Australian people use the word shit. I started to write a list and told all my friends I was working on this project. This shitty list built up very quickly and I decided to use these colloquialisms in a biographical way, explaining situations and feelings I was having at each time. The shit series have taught me a lot of Australian slang. And after two years, I finally completed this project, having created 100 personal posts. Now, for my solo show in Melbourne, I designed a series of illustrated cocktail artworks, including a French one called Absinthe. The lettering Absinthe got stuck on my mind. And a year later, I went back to it and drew the rest of the 26 letters of the uppercase alphabet. And this is the beginning of my third and last story for today. At the beginning of 2017, a typographic publication based in Germany emailed me, inviting me to be part of their special golden edition type calendar featuring my green fairy font. And of course I said, yes. Now, at that point, I had only designed A to Z in capital letters. The date for my page on the calendar was going to be Wednesday, the 5th of December. Now, as you can tell, I did not have designed any numbers. So I had to start really quickly to design number five straight away. And as you can imagine as well, it took me a lot longer than I imagined. So I submitted my page two days after the deadline. Typodarium said, oh, sorry, Maria, we thought you couldn't meet the deadline. So we gave you a date to another designer. But they also said, but we really want to feature Green Fairy font. So your new date is now April 12th. Well, as you can imagine, 
sweat was coming down my back because I did not have number one and number two design. And just the idea of having to rush again with another title deadline of numbers that didn't exist up to now was not an option. So I convinced them I couldn't invest more time working on the page layout and luckily they agreed to proceed with my original date. I asked Typo Darium, when is the calendar going to be printed and distributed? And they said, at the end of 2017. So that was it for me. Really, that was it. I set myself a deadline of 11 months to turn 27 drawings into a fully functioning font file with more than 600 glyphs. Now, Green Ferry started being one white, but quickly turned into a multi-layer font. Things were going more or less okay till I arrived to the dots white. I started drawing squares following a grid. Then the squares turned into diamonds. Then the grid wasn't working so well on the wrong letters. So I tried to randomize the position of the dots, but it didn't work. So I went back to the grid and this time I scaled down the position of the diamond shapes, creating a half tone effect. I spent many hours drawing, redrawing, adjusting, readjusting, tweaking and retweaking. And then the diacritics came on board and then symbols, currencies, and then the numbers, kerning, after nine months full time and many crises later, I could confidently share that my green fairy font was coming to life as a font family highly ornamented for display purposes. This means that every layer or style is stuck on top of each other to create multiple chromatic styles. Green fairy has four chromatic whites, the outline, the dots, the stencil and the full and has also three combined weights for all these occasions where you only need to use one color in your font. In September, 2017, I felt pretty good. You know, the calendar was gonna be distributed at the end of the year. So I had three months to find a font distributor. So I compiled all my work and sent an email to a, one of the biggest font foundries asking them to publish my work. Now the font distributor took two months to get back to me. And on that email in November told me, thanks for your submission, Maria. We will need a minimum of two more months to consider whether we want to publish your font or not. Well, at this time, I lost all my hopes on releasing the font before the end of 2017 and before the calendar was going to be sold and distributed. Now, in March, 2018, which is six months after my submission email to the font distributor, they finally grant me as a font foundry. And recently, my Green Fairy font has turned three years old. Now, to conclude with this presentation, I want to add something else that I think is very important following today's topic. So, Talking about this font, I have to mention that up to today, I have only found another woman who has published a font in Australia commercially, only one other Australian woman. Now, to close and to reflect on what can you do in the next 10, I'm going to share some things I'm extremely passionate about. So I'm extremely passionate about the power of representation. And I have recently written about finding your inner campus. I know today I have a few, we have a few brand and marketing uh, managers in this event. And I would like to invite you to reflect with me in one, a few very important questions of what to do with the next 10 years. So here we come. What is the reason why you are designing? What are the impacts of your work? What is the legacy that you want to leave behind in this visual culture? What responsibilities do we in the design sector have? 
I'm a privileged person who lives in a very fortunate island where more than the 28% of us were born overseas in more than 200 countries. Where a quarter of the population speak more than 260 languages other than English. And where over 50% of Australians follow more than 130 different faiths. And in this context, as a designer, as an artist, as an educator, I feel the responsibility of spreading this message across by celebrating cultural diversity, supporting women in the industry, highlighting the importance of gender equality and inclusion, and by making sure that we all understand that by bringing more voices, colors and underrepresented groups up on the stage can only make us have a better view of the world and actually can make us better. I believe that my purpose in life is passing knowledge, create emotion through my work and helping others to question our socialist structures and to believe in themselves. I also believe that some great things take a huge amount of time. Happy 10th anniversary intentional. It's a truly remarkable achievement and I'm really proud to be a small part of it. Much love to all of you and thank you very much. Excellent, thanks so much, Maria. Brilliant, brilliant um, work there, incredible stuff and yeah, really inspiring. And an excellent compliment obviously to Dan's presentation as well. So well done, um, intentional for, for getting together, you know, such different and uh, fascinating speakers today. Um, Obviously, uh, following that excellent presentation from Maria and some of her spectacular work, um, Maria has graciously given everyone on the webinar today a free digital gift pack for some of her work. Links to Maria's giveaways and the Intentional 10th Birthday offers can all be found on the Intentional 10th Birthday landing page. It's now live, intention.al forward slash 10. And that really draws the session today to a close. So again, thanks so much for everyone for making the time today. Um, and thanks so much for uh, Adam and, and obviously Chris for, for putting this on. Um, it's a bit weird to see something like this done over Zoom. I suppose we do everything over Zoom now, don't we? But I think it's worked really, really well. And I think it's definitely been uh, an enjoyable, engaging presentation. And uh, yeah, really grateful to be a part of that. So well done, everyone. Um, Chris, I don't know if you want to say anything or Adam wants to say anything just before we sort of wrap up. That's it from me. And thanks a lot for everyone for making it today. Cheers. Thanks, James. I think that yeah wraps it up. Thanks everyone for jumping on. And uh, yeah, make sure you check out the 10 landing page. We finally actually made our own website. <laughs> so uh, we're really proud of it. And uh, yeah, thank you to, to Joel who's helped us on that journey. But yeah, thanks for jumping on today. And uh, we'll catch you all soon.